Hello, Bonnie. Good morning, Mr. Patrick Stewart. How are you today? Grand, thank you. How are you? I'm very, very good. Well, we're here in Toronto, where I know that you were recently here for the film festival. Did you have yourself a good time? I had a wonderful time. I don't think I've had so much fun at a festival anywhere at any time than this past year in Toronto. One of the reasons may have been because my movie, Green Room, played the Midnight Madness slot. And it's the first time I've ever heard a cinema audience be turned into a football crowd. It was, uh, <laughs> it, it, it was very lively, I can assure you. No, Toronto that and is, the festival yes. were wonderful. Yes, that's an experience in itself. I, I, but, you know, congratulations on making it through. I commend you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this film, I have to ask you right away. I don't know about you, but being in an elevator by myself scares the, it scares the bejesus out of me. Seriously, when you read this script, were you even a little bit concerned about the claustrophobia? Well, there is no claustrophobia as such for my character because unlike all the other elevators which are interiors this one is a cage on the outside of a building under construction a 30-story right. building and um, it was a, perhaps the exact opposite of claustrophobia it was too much exposure on a, <laughs> a, a long winter's night uh, suspended with the elevator occasionally dropping a foot or 18 inches um, created yeah. a situation of real peril and, and significant discomfort, which is what transforms this miserable, unpleasant, bullying uh, uh, property developer into a really rather soft-hearted, sentimental, and, and certainly very squeamish individual. Yeah, but you never, you know, what I have to admit that playing the curmudgeonly, not nice guy has to be more fun. More fun? Uh, well, I, I, I played a lot of very unpleasant people in my time. It's just that I'm yes. most well known for two characters who were not particularly unpleasant. But yes, there is, <laughs> it, you know, it's like finding a character who appears to have no sense of humor, finding out where his sense of humor actually lives, or somebody who is very nasty, where it is that they can actually be nice, what can transform them. And this was, I think, I think for all of us in the movies, although I, I didn't shoot anything with anybody else, um, I think right. that's what makes this so much fun. Yeah. Do you enjoy working on your own, doing something? I know you do a lot of voiceover work, and that you know that exposes you to being on your own a lot. But is it? Do you find it still a challenge to do that, or do you enjoy that? I, I I've done solo stage work, and of course, yes, you're right. With with voiceovers for animation, you're usually alone. I I do enjoy it, but. In fact, the opposite is, is mostly true. I've been a, a company actor all my life. I love working mm -hmm. in an ensemble. I love working with the same people day in, day out, month in, month out, which is why I spent so many of my years with the Royal Shakespeare Company. And it was the same, yes. of course, with things like X-Men. We were the same group of actors assembled every time. And, of course, seven years of Next Generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also, you know, what I love about you is that you just miss it, you mix it up so all the time. You're always choosing all different types of characters to play, of course, as an actor, that's wonderful. But you, you know, your recent series, Blunt Talk, wow, this one, over the top, hilarious. How much fun is doing something like that? Oh, so much fun. I don't think I've <laughs> ever had th that much sheer entertainment and laughter while doing any project in the past. A brilliant, brilliant script by Jonathan Ames and a wonderful group of actors to work with. And I, I got to do things on camera that I had never done before. Some things I wouldn't yeah. even do alone in a darkened room. And, and that was certainly amusing and entertaining for me. It's, uh, it's been a marvelous experience and we start shooting our second season in about six weeks time. Amazing. Wow, good for you on that. What, you know, what do you think is the perfect Christmas? Because I don't think being stuck in an elevator would uh, be your first choice. Oh, you know, I have to confess that I am a bit of a Scrooge. No, that's not right. I am a lot of a Scrooge when it comes to Christmas. <laughs> um, I start getting panic attacks round about October and they are now at their height. I woke up the other morning because, you know, in, particularly in the, in the UK, we are big Christmas card senders and I have a huge list of recipients and I suddenly panicked that I'd left it too late to do all of my Christmas cards. I haven't. I did them all yesterday, by the way, just to reassure your audience that, uh, that the panic is Excellent. Over. But um, 
uh, I, cr Christmas was not always that much fun when I was a child, and I think I've I've got really rather ambivalent feelings about it. Okay, okay, fair enough. Now I have to ask you, being the Star Trek veteran that you are, I just need to know: Are you even a little bit excited about the new Star Wars movie? Oh, I, I, more than a little bit. I'm very excited about it. I, I have not forgotten the experience of going into a cinema one afternoon because I was working in the theatre every night back in those days. And, and seeing that for the first time, I was overwhelmed by it and went straight back and saw it again the next afternoon. And I'm looking forward very much to this. I mean, Star Wars is, if, 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 if you're in the entertainment business or if you enjoy movies, this has been one of the most significant events of the 20th century, that franchise yeah. doing so well and providing such marvelous entertainment. I'm very excited about seeing it. Well, good stuff. Well, I hope lots of people are excited to see Christmas Eve this weekend. It's uh, going to be, it looks like a ton of fun. And uh, I just honestly, just personally, I hope where you haven't seen the, the last of Professor X. Please tell me we haven't. Um, uh, <laughs> maybe we haven't. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Have a good Christmas, no matter how you feel about it. And uh, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank, Thank you, you so Bonnie. much. For me too.